Hello and welcome to DFS Coach Talk. It's Tuesday, January 18th, 2022. I'm Andrew Hansen, ready to break down this two-game NBA DFS slate. Hope everybody had a great, long MLK Junior holiday weekend. And now we get to dive in here on this two-game slate. All eyes will be here. No football tonight. It's all hoops. And I'm fired up about it. Love these two-game slates. And this one's really interesting with pricing. Only four guys out of these two games are priced over 8000 on FanDuel and only five guys on DraftKings. So it's a little bit easier to get all or most of the studs into your lineup. Uh, so we're going to go through each team here and uh, break it down a little bit further to make sure we can sort through those mid-tier guys and the value guys to try to build some winners on DraftKings and FanDuel. And then, of course, we'll add the Yahoo lineups for our members. Also, we've got a nice split in the game times. We've got Minnesota, New York at 7.30 Eastern, and then Detroit and Golden State tipping off at 10 Eastern. A doubleheader here televised on NBA TV. And three of the four teams are involved in a back-to-back. -back. So I dug in on all of those situations, and I've got some pointers there as we try to project minutes and rotations. All right, so game one, this one has a closer spread as Minnesota favored by two and a half in New York, total of 214. There's not a lot that we like from this game in terms of a profile, because other than Minnesota's top five pace, we've got two teams who are above average defensively. We've got New York, who's 30th in pace, and both teams are below average offensively. And this is a front end for Minnesota. They're going to go to Atlanta tomorrow. And looking at uh, what Minnesota has done primarily on front ends, uh, I actually don't think it'll be too big of an issue today, maybe more so tomorrow. But I'm, I'm thinking the starters should play in the 30s with their minutes, assuming this game is close. So I'm looking at Patrick Beverly, D'Angelo Russell, Anthony Edwards, Vanderbilt, and the big cat to be out there for good minutes. Let's go right to the big cat here. Uh, he's one of the pay-up guys on the slate. I do like him. He's been playing very well lately. Uh, we know that it's not an ideal matchup here with New York and their slow pace and solid defense. But again, it's a two-game slate, so you kind of throw everything out the window. Uh, and I, I think I do want to start with Cat in my lineups, and anything else would be a GPP uh, if we move someone else into that center spot. Uh, with the rest of the Minnesota starters, I think Anthony Edwards is a little bit overpriced for me on this slate as one of those 8K guys. I'm more likely to pay up for the other studs and fade him. Uh, D'Angelo Russell, a, a tick cheaper, uh, really a GPP option. Uh, if he shows up, we know he can get a double-double. If not, he can really throw up a dud at that price. Patrick Beverly is interesting for me here. Uh, 5,500 on DraftKings is real nice on a slate like this. 6,400 on FanDuel is playable. He's averaging two stocks a game, uh, so he's pretty consistent on that defensive end. And then Vanderbilt uh, can get you a double-double, but a little pricey for me here tonight. Looking at Minnesota's bench, my favorite guy is probably Beasley because we know he comes in and chucks. 4,000 on FanDuel is nice. You can play him at sh shooting guard or small forward. Uh, you know, he can light it up. Uh, you know, from distance, and he's done so a couple times recently. Uh, not a must play, but uh, he he's on my radar. And then McDaniel's, I like his price on DraftKings at thirty five hundred. You need guys like that on a two game slate, so he's in the mix for that spot. Uh, Jalen Noel is probable with an ankle. Uh, don't think I'll go there. I like some other guys in that four K range a little bit better. And Reed. Could certainly hit value, um, but doesn't usually get uh, significant minutes behind Cat, you know, mid-teens. Uh, so I don't think I'll get to him tonight, and I don't think I'll get to Torian Prince either, who has been getting some minutes. All right, let's look at this New York side, the home team. This is a back-to-back -back for them, coming off a 10-point loss to Charlotte. And looking at back-to-backs for New York this season, what I'm projecting here is that Barrett, Randall, and Burks are pretty likely to get minutes in the 30s. 
uh, probably Burks, you know, maybe he would flirt with the high 20s if quickly plays well off the bench. But I feel, feel pretty solid about R.J. Barrett and Randall's minutes. Barrett did play 39 minutes last night. Randall, 31. Uh, and they've been okay on back-to-backs. Randall, a bit of a dip. Um, so maybe you could think about fading him, especially on DraftKings where he's 92. Uh, and, you know, you've got some length over there on Minnesota with Vanderbilt and, and McDaniels to try to mess with Randall. But 8,400 on DraftKings is, uh, sorry, on FanDuel is pretty solid for Randall. Uh, Burke's mid 6K range. Now, like I said, I, I feel pretty solid about his minutes, but we do have Patrick Beverly likely going to be up in his grill all night. So that makes me hesitate on Burks. Fournier, like the classic GPP option, one of the almost definition guys who can just throw up a goose egg or or drop 40 actual points. So I'm not going to make the cash lineup, but in the 5K range, he's certainly uh, someone you might want to consider for GPPs. And Mitchell Robinson, 5,400. He's one of the centers. Uh, you know, we don't have a ton to consider if we're going to fade Cat, but um, certainly capable of a double-double, getting, you know, upper 20s minutes. Uh, so he's an option uh, in a GPP. Um, before we hit the bench, I should mention the uh, injury list for New York because we have Reddish and Rose still out. And then Kemba... He seems to be working his way back, but not quite Uh, looking at the comments from Thibodeau. So I'm going to mark him as doubtful, likely out. And Nerlens Noel also I'm I'm listing as doubtful. Uh, Both those guys dealing with knee issues. So then what we're looking at is what we've seen with the rotation recently. Quickly, Grimes, Obi Toppin, Taj Gibson. Quickly is a nice price on DraftKings at 4,000. Grimes is in the 3K range, but... Don't really like his floor, so I would go quickly if I was going to hit that uh, guard off the bench for New York. Taj Gibson, very cheap, uh, also a pretty low floor, uh, GPP only for me. And Obi Toppin, uh, very similar, low floor, but 3K range, maybe the last guy in. So that will wrap up coverage of Game 1. Before I go to Game 2, just want to invite folks to jump in with uh, the family tonight and grab our lineups. Go to dfscoachtalk.com if you'd like to join. Anything you grab for membership will include all four memberships, no matter what it's called. Uh, memberships to all sports is, is what I'm referencing. So you get lineups in all of our sports, no matter what membership you pick. So jump in today and we'll send you an email to get you into our Discord. And then we'll give out the lineups tonight. Full lineups on FanDuel and Yahoo for your cash lineup, your GPP lineup, and a core on DraftKings to get you going over there. All right, game two, we have Detroit and Golden State. Now, this one's very similar with the total of 216 compared to the first game, but uh, looking at a potential blowout here, of course, Golden State favored by 14 and a half, line moving up to 15. Uh, They're the only team on the slate with an island game for Detroit. It's a front end. They're going to go to Sacramento tomorrow. So they're out there in the Golden State. Um, And this one is actually a little bit better on paper in terms of the, the features. We've got Detroit 11th in pace this year, Golden State 12th. And then we also like Golden State with their top 10 offense and Detroit bottom 10 defense. So more to like in this game, but we do have the potential blowout, of course, and Golden State's been playing them, winning, losing, 20, 40. I mean, they haven't played close games uh, for a bit. A lot going on over there. But let's start with Detroit, and the guy's still out there, Jeremy Grant and Olenek. And I've got a doubtful tag on Frank Jackson and Magruder, those guys dealing with COVID, conditioning, trades that fall through, uh, you name it. Uh, But... Assuming those guys are out, we're going to see Hayes, Diallo, Cade Cunningham, Sadiq Bey, and Stewart likely starting again tonight. And the primary guys in the bench rotation, Corey Joseph, Saban Lee, Josh Jackson, Trey Lyles, Cassius Stanley is uh, you know on the fringes there as well. 
looking at the starting group here, uh, I think Diallo, Kate Cunningham, and Bay are a little pricey for me on FanDuel. Now, when Detroit has been in front ends recently, the guys that have gotten the most minutes are Cade Cunningham and Sadiq Bay. Uh, if you look at the last one, Cunningham had 38, Bay 36, and everybody else was in the mid 20s or less. So, again, I, I think those two guys are likely to get 30 minutes. Um, it, you know, if anyone does, um, and Bay at 6,800 on FanDuel is, is again, the ideal GPP option. If you want a guy who's volatile, he's your man. You know, he can give you three out of four in the 20s for fantasy points and then hit you for 40. So is this the night? Uh, it is a tough defense. Uh, number one on the other side with Golden State. Well, we know that Draymond is out, so they won't be as tough here. But uh, that's the situation with Bay. They're all more attractive on FanDuel, and I, I don't know. I may have um, misspoke there. Sorry if I did. They're they're priced higher on DraftKings, uh, more playable on FanDuel. All three of them. Kate Cunningham six thousand on FanDuel. Uh, really a price you have to grapple with. Um, and Bay sixty one as a small forward only, more more attractive over there. Killian Hayes really the best price though on both sites thirty eight hundred DraftKings forty one. FanDuel point guard only another guy with a, a low floor. He's been a little bit better lately. Uh, you know, Kojo is there getting good minutes off the bench, but uh, Hayes is in the mix for me. Stewart. Uh, interesting that Stewart and Lyles are power forward only on FanDuel. So there's more of a chance to get those guys in the lineup for me. If you're going to go with uh, the cat in game one, Lyle's priced up though at 57. Uh, it is deserved though, because he's been, you know, obviously their best player off the bench and really good fantasy points per minute here for, for quite a while. Just 18 and six in, in just 19 minutes against Phoenix in that blowout loss on Sunday. He's in the mix. Uh, Corey Joseph, much better price on FanDuel at 44. I uh, don't think I'll get to him on DraftKings at 52. Josh Jackson, here's another GPP option. Maybe we should just uh, group all these guys together in our GPP build. Um, you know, he's had a few games there with 20 fantasy points where he kind of flirts with 5 to 6x, and then he gets ejected in the last game and has a dud. So maybe he rebounds here and is the difference maker. It's guys like that that you'll often see Break the slate, so to speak, on a, on a two-game NBA slate. Guy off the bench, uh, just gets hot, you know, picks up some stocks. And we know that he's got that that upside, uh, but he's just so scary to play. So, again, GPP option there. And uh, I do want to mention Cassius Stanley because he got 22 minutes in the last game. But in addition to Jackson getting ejected, Cade Cunningham got ejected. Uh, so the trickle down there really helped Stanley. Uh, so I would project him to have much less than 22 minutes as he did in the last game. All right, let's look at this Golden State side. Uh, I, I do think they'll win this one pretty easily because Steph is back in the lineup after that right hand injury kept him out. 10-6, uh, he's expensive, uh, but I, I will probably have him in the cash game and don't know if I can if I can fade him on a two game slate the way this breaks down. Clay, I'm also looking at here uh, the old Splash Brothers back together. Might I might just put them together in the lineup. Fifty five hundred on DraftKings. Uh, that's that's playable for me. We know his minutes have been down, but they're trending slightly up. He started at twenty. He's gotten up to twenty three minutes. And he's really been firing it while he's out there. In these four games back, he's averaged 14 field goal attempts per game and seven threes attempted per game. So I like Clay here on this slate, uh, the way it all works down with his price tag. You know, if we can just get the 14 field goal attempts again, uh, I'll live with those results. Looking at the rest of the starting lineup here for Golden State should be Wiggins, Otto Porter Jr. and Looney as Draymond is is still out, of course. Wiggins is a nice price on DraftKings. Sorry, on FanDuel at 58. 
he you know he has been down a little bit lately uh so he's on the borderline for me Otto Porter Jr. has been playing pretty well in these spot starts, but 6,900 on FanDuel is a little bit high. And then Looney is right on that borderline price for him, around 5,000 on both sites. Uh, and again, tough to play him with the big cat. He is power forward eligible, though, on FanDuel. And then looking at the Golden State bench, what we had last game was Poole starting in, in uh, Steph's ab- absence. So I think he'll go back to the bench, and that should – give a hit to Damian Lee, who got 24 minutes. So I think Poole is is that first guard off the bench. And then Gary Payton is questionable with the back issue. It's kept him out for the last two games. So look at those two guys as guard options, especially in mop-up duty. We've got Iguodala, who played 20 minutes in the last game, didn't do too much. Kaminga has been much better. Uh, he's been a real force here in Golden State's last three games. He's scored in double figures in all three and put up some pretty good numbers, some stocks. Uh, so 4,300 on DraftKings is excellent price for him. Power forward only. Uh, a little bit tougher to get to him on FanDuel where he's 5,100 small forward only. And then Bielitsa, uh will be in the mix. Uh, Juan Toscano Anderson right on the fringe of that rotation. Um, Moody also questionable. So we'll see who that last guy in for Golden State is uh, if they're winning big in the fourth quarter. All right, that is the rundown of the likely rotations, some of my favorite plays, some of my fades, some of the GPP candidates, and looking for a big night. So I appreciate everybody for tuning in. Please do hit the uh, like button on YouTube. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We've got the seven-day-a-week NBA podcast coming to you in front of the paywall. We'll have the NFL coverage uh, for the divisional round this week, so stay tuned for that. We may even have a surprise guest there. And golf, we'll, uh, we'll tee it up again tomorrow there for PGA. Any questions, reach out to us on Twitter at DFS Coach Talk. You can find me at Language Olympic. All right, on behalf of the entire DFS Coach Talk team, I'm Andrew Hansen. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you next time as we look to crush it in DFS.